Every year, there's an army of new gadgets trying to capture your attention with, well, varying degrees of success. But every so often, we see something with a truly undeniable cool factor. And devices with foldable screens, which appear to be just around the bend, might just be the next example of this. But what sort of new school science fiction makes foldable screens possible? I mean, from the time we were all watching heavy tube TVs with rabbit ear antennas to now streaming on Netflix on our iPhones, we've always used rigid displays. Well, it turns out that a simple form of foldable display tech was actually invented all the way back in 1974 when disco of all things was first catching on. That year, a Xerox employee developed the Gyrocon, which was actually an early form of electronic paper, similar to what you'd find in today's e-readers like the Amazon Kindle. Now, because it worked by suspending ink containing particles in fluid, it didn't need a rigid frame or a backing. Instead, the device just applied a voltage to each particle to get it to show either black or white, depending on what text was to be displayed. Of course, these days, flexible displays with the low resolution of an e-ink device aren't what most people are interested in. Rather, the foldable display tech we're all expecting to see in our smartphones in the near future is going to be based around OLEDs. Now you can learn more about OLEDs here, but the important thing to know is that their chemical makeup allows them to produce their own light, meaning that they don't need a bulky backlight behind the color layer. This has made it possible for companies like LG to build shockingly thin TVs. But how do we go from a thin but still rigid screen to a screen that you can fold or even roll up? Well, as it turns out, the OLEDs themselves are only about one ten thousandth of a millimeter thick. That is a thousand times thinner than your average sheet of paper. So it's not that hard to fathom that you could fold them like a piece of paper. So while most current phones and TVs attach OLEDs to a piece of glass, which is obviously thicker and less foldable than paper, foldable displays instead use a layer of bendable plastic to support the OLEDs. So then that's it. You swap out your glass for plastic and Bob's your uncle, you got a foldable display. No, I'm just kidding. So of course it's not that simple. I mean, think about it. If you were to fold a piece of paper over and over again along the same crease, it will eventually weaken and break. And this is paper, it's designed to be folded. This is not the kind of behavior you want out of an expensive smartphone. So not just any old thin piece of plastic is gonna do the trick. Instead, Samsung appears to be using a special glass plastic hybrid layer to give its foldable phone a little more resiliency and strength. And this is really cool. It's supposed to be stronger than Gorilla Glass, but only about 50 microns thick, making it easy to fold. Another challenge though, has been to incorporate electronics other than the actual OLEDs. Now, it might not be difficult to picture a flexible printed circuit board. I mean, you can get roll up keyboards for 25 bucks on eBay, but manufacturing a touch screen that can be folded is more of a novel problem as the layer that responds to touch on traditional smartphones and tablets is rigid, meaning that manufacturers might have to turn to more exotic nanomaterials. All of this though is really cool, but kind of raises the question, what even is the point of going to all this trouble just for a foldable screen? I mean, aren't our typical, you know, Hershey bar shaped phones serving us just fine without another gimmick? Well, one huge potential advantage of foldable devices is that they'll be a lot harder to break, either from accidental drops or just even leaving them in your back pocket. And the Android team is already working on developer options that should allow apps to take full advantage of foldable screens and change layouts or add functionality on the fly as the user folds, unfolds, or refolds the display. So it could result in more flexibility, pun intended. But it'll probably be a while before the software fully realizes the potential of foldable phones. And you also might be in for a wait if you want a foldable gadget that you can actually afford. Although the plastics that allow them to bend may ultimately prove cheaper for phone companies than the glass that they're using today, manufacturing challenges and the ever-present early adopter tax mean that you will probably have to fork over a lot of cash if you really want one at the beginning. If you're short on money though, don't worry guys, there's plenty of cheaper conversation pieces that you can buy. Wow. And they ain't never gonna take me down. <laughs> 
Here's a New Year's resolution that's both fun and rewarding. Check out today's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant helps you train your brain every day by providing you with problems to solve. Each problem provides you with the context and the framework that you need to tackle it so you can learn these concepts by applying them. And if you like the daily problem, then there's lots more like it in the quiz on the left so you can explore the concept in great detail and develop your framework. If you're confused and you need more guidance, then join the community and discuss these problems. These thought-provoking challenges are designed to lead you from curiosity to mastery just one day at a time. So what are you waiting for? Go to brilliant.org slash techquickie. We're gonna have that linked below and finish your day a little smarter than you began it. The first 200 of you to do so, you're the smartest ones of all because you're gonna get 20% off the annual subscription to view all the problems in the archives at brilliant.org. So thanks for watching, guys. Like, dislike, check out our other videos. Don't forget to leave a comment. If you have a suggestion for a future fast as possible, please leave a comment. We're completely out of ideas over here. We have no idea what to do. I mean, what was this video even about? I can't even remember. I, I actually can't remember. I just hosted it. Oh, right, bendable screens, bendable screens. Who thought of that? So, so leave a comment and then subscribe so that you can see your video come to life on a screen that's frigid. <laughs>